Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. This is Chrisum, and I would like to welcome you to this conversation about your Kundalini Awakening experience. Uh, and I'd like to immediately welcome my co-host, Amelia Santara. Hello, Amelia. Hello, Chrisum. Hello, listeners. Good to be here. Well, it's good. It's Yes, uh, indeed it is. It is good to be here. A uh, beautiful rainy day in California. You know, I can see that, uh, that, you know, nature is attempting to lift the drought. We will see. Uh, and, I, and I understand you're having some pretty wild weather over there yourself, Amelia, in Ireland. Yes, we are, Chrism. It's um, happening every day, lots of rain and very high winds. So it's, um, it's been pretty amazing here for the last couple of weeks. Well, excellent, and I'm glad. I'm glad that you're safe and dry and warm, and we're able to do this blog talk radio show thanks to you and your husband John. So many thanks to the both of you. You're very welcome, indeed. Will I begin by speaking a little about the seminars? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, to tell you again, listeners, that the two seminars are happening in March. Uh, the first one is happening in New York in the beautiful um, Westchester County. It's about 35 miles north of New York City. And it is happening on March the 23rd and March the 20, or March the 22nd and March the 23rd. And if you're interested in attending, please um, contact me on kundalinimatters at gmail.com. There are still... Uh, two places available for that uh, seminar. The following weekend, there is a seminar in Ireland. Chrism is flying over to Europe. And I'm delighted to be able to welcome people to that seminar in Newgrange. It's the same place where we have the seminar in, in October. And so I know that it's going to be a wonderful gathering of Kundalini people with Chrism. And Chrism is going to lead us into Newgrange on the Sunday, which is going to be part of our seminar, and I'm really looking forward to doing that again. So March the 29th and March the 30th, if you would like to attend that or if you would like to have any information about it, please contact me again on kundalinimatters at gmail.com. Well, thank you. Yeah, you know, that's wonderful, wonderful news. Thank you. And and uh, to everybody who is listening in the archives, Amelia, do you have a view of the archives? Or, or not the archives, but the chat room? Yes, I do, Chris. And we have a good few guests in the chat room. Most of them are numbers, but I do know Fashji is there and Sukha is there, and they're with us every week. So welcome to the two of you and to the other guests as well who are numbers, but I think they're probably the same guests that join us every week. Well, welcome, welcome to the to this conversation, everyone. Uh, and I'd like to to say thanks to Eileen, Loro, Glenn, Ola, uh, Rosemary Goliath, Amelia Santara, and the many other people that help uh, put this this show on the on the uh, internet and on the computer waves. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, as Amelia mentioned, uh, we'll be going to Ireland uh, for the. For our third, I, I believe, our third Kundalini Awakening seminar, and this does have a lot to do with the the New Grange Monument. Um, and as Amelia mentioned, we'll be going into the the New Grange Monument uh, as part of the seminar, and I'll be giving explanations about, you know, what can happen in there. You know, every you know, people are getting visions as they go into the New Grange Monument. And so I really would suggest for those of you who are in Europe and, who, you know, who have an interest in this subject and would like to participate, I would encourage you to come to the uh, Irish uh, Awakening Seminar. And you can contact Amelia at uh, kundaliniMatters at gmail.com and, and uh, get yourself on the list for that. Uh, the other thing that is occurring is that Amelia and I are putting together an ancient Irish monument tour. And uh, for those of you who are interested in that, you can also uh, email Amelia at kundalinimatters at 
www.newgrangeconsultants.com. And what this tour would consist of would be, of course, New Grange, which is part of the seminar, but also the, the Hill of Tara. And, and the, there's a, there's a, uh, a passage uh, temple called Four Knox. And uh, we also have uh, uh, another passage temple that, that I have been to and Amelia has been to before that are, that are on the YouTube videos. And this is the Hill of the Witch. And going there, in addition to perhaps some other of the monument areas in uh, which is which is fairly close. They're, they're fairly centralized in that one county. There's a lot of monuments there. But, of course... In Ireland, there is so there's such a a, a a a huge amount of sacred sites in Ireland, and and I see it as no accident that the Kundalini in me wants to be giving uh, this information in the country of Ireland. So I invite everybody to come over. Now, with regards to ancient megalithic sites, uh, the Kundalini is is older than any of them. Kundalini has been in the tailbones and and the uh, you know the the first chakra areas of humans for a very very long time, and you know this this enlightenment process has has conceived civilizations, seen them seen them when they were young and as they reach the height of their expression and then seen them fall and. One need only mention the uh, the Sanskriti civilization that was the uh, the forerunner to the modern Hindu society. These people knew about the Kundalini. They wrote about it in the Rig Veda. I mean, anybody with Kundalini awakened in them, when they look at the Rig Veda or even just hold the book, you can begin to receive the information that that the uh, the rishis. Uh, which were the people of the Sanskriti uh, nation, the rishis put together in the oral history that the Rig Veda started out to be. It was at first an oral history. And it is now uh, considered one of the oldest books uh, in, in, uh, in the world. So uh, with that in mind, as you go into these sacred sites in Ireland, we're talking a country that has had a mystical tradition that goes back seven, eight thousand years. Uh, this reminds me a lot of uh, Sardinia and the Naragi people, and you know they went back into the into the uh, into the far distant past as well. And uh, and once again, you know they were able to move the large stones and they were able to to build these tremendous uh, structures uh, without electricity and in some cases without even the wheel. So it, it gives you a little bit of a pause to think, well, what did these ancients know that we here in the modern world, as we are so addicted to our technology, that we don't know? What did they know that we don't know? And one of those, one of those aspects of the knowledge that they had was the Kundalini. When you're on a natural diurnal schedule, meaning... Uh, you know, you, you, you wake up with the sunrise and you, and you go to sleep with the sunset. Uh, your bio patterns, uh, experience somewhat of a reset. Even they, 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 I guess somebody had way too much money and they didn't know how to spend it. So they did a study that allowed them to understand that if a person goes camping for a week, their biological clock is reset. So there you go. That's probably cost a few million dollars to figure that one out uh but it's true it is true and when you go out there and you're in in these areas of ireland where the megaliths stand or even you know amelia centaur's front yard where, where she has a standing stone you can feel the intentional positioning of these sacred stones these huge sacred stones and as you as you gravitate and, and graduate from say the standing stones, then you can go into the areas of the standing stone circles, and then you can go into the areas of like as we've mentioned before the uh, the uh, the temples that are dotted all over all over Ireland. But what we're looking at with with regards to a Kundalini context, really, 
are the extremely ancient ones. Uh, a lot of it is to feel when you go into them, you can feel a level of energy, a level of kundalini, a level of a desire to communicate beyond the lifespan of the typical human at that time, which I don't even know what it was. I don't think anybody uh, can guesstimate on, on how long people were living uh, when the Tuaha de Danan were controlling the Irish island. You know, once again, we're talking eight or 9,000 years ago. Long, long time before the British domination of Ireland or, you know, any of the many uh, swarms of uh, peoples that have come onto the Irish uh, island and, and tried to dominate its people, which never has really worked well for any of them, <laughs> including the Irish people. But as we go to these sacred sites, like the Hill of the Witch, you will see uh, certain messages carved into the stone, the, the, uh, the, 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 the winged, winged sika, which energy in movement, or at least in, in this context, energy that is, that is flying, a winged, uh, uh, anything with a wing ind indicates uh, something that is taking flight. Uh, and so you'll see that. You'll also go in and see what very, very, very few people on this earth have been blessed. Excuse me a moment. Oh, my gosh. So I'll probably get another sneeze in there. So my, <laughs> please, please excuse me. So, yeah, uh, as we as we go into these passage temples, you'll see the artwork on the wall. You will see the the huge huge stones somehow put into an intricate pattern that is so stable that it has lasted you know you know the 8000 years since since it was built um we'll be going to these uh, on this on this kundalini uh tour and and I would welcome anybody who has that interest uh to contact us uh, for the next date that that will be taking place. And uh, poor Amelia, I just kind of popped this on her. She's probably spinning in her chair right now going, what? <laughs> so uh, kudos <laughs> to you. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm kind of used to it. <laughs> so, yeah, no, it's so, an honor. It, it would be an honor. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's wonderful and very exciting, and I'm really looking forward to it. I love the way that, um, you know, when we go to these places, Chrism, I love the way that you know about these things, and it has been a real joy to visit these areas with you. And anybody who comes will experience that too because you begin to see, you know, you feel within yourself um, the connection with the Kundalini and things begin to occur. And with Chrism there, you know, it opens up a new viewing and a new understanding of being in these places. And they are sacred places. And a lot of the things that are written about these places, like Newgrange, like they will say Newgrange is a passage tomb. And it is, of course, you know, okay, it's a passage tomb. But really, as Chrism says, it's an ancient temple. There was a lot of things went on there, ancient ceremonies and, you know, all of these things. And you begin to feel this when you're in those sacred areas. And being there with Chrism is a real privilege. So anybody who's interested, um, do contact me at kundalinimatters at gmail.com. And I would be delighted to talk with you about that aspect of, of the... Kundalini tour, shall we call it? <laughs> yeah, well, it's as good a name as any. So, yeah, you know, and with these passage, what they 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 call them a tomb because they don't know, you know, and uh, you know, the Western society is so anti divinity, you know, it, it you know it, it has to be something that they can grasp and understand the scientists, the uh, the uh, the Oxford scholars, and uh, and. You know, if it doesn't have something to grab onto, well, they'll create something to grab onto. And so, because they didn't, they couldn't really understand it as a as a as a passage temple. Well, they became a passage tomb because they did. They did find some human bones in them, but it, you know, it, 
the original design was not as a tomb. It was a, it was a, it was a, you know, a sign of the equinox, a solstice indicator, and, and other very, very sacred sites. And it is the the forerunner of of the cross. Uh, and there's Egyptian uh, uh, influence in in Ireland. One of the one of the queens of the Tuatha de Danann was uh, was a uh, an Egyptian princess, the daughter of Pharaoh, and the daughter of Pharaoh uh, uh, married one of the kings of the Tuatha de Danann, and the Tuatha de Danann are the the people of the goddess Danu. Uh, and uh, these people ruled Ireland for some few thousand years. So they left a very, very indelible footprint upon the, uh, the, the island of Ireland. And even to this day, they are still referred to uh, as the people of the hills or the, the people that went into the hills or the, the, the people that are called the she or, or as uh, in the English language, you would call them. Uh, they would be similar, I guess, to the to the elves that you would see in uh, the Tolkien movies. Okay, these are not little tiny miniature folks with wings flying around. Although there are those as well, but we're talking, you know, creatures that are bigger than us, much taller than us, and are, you know, extremely smart. <laughs> They're not stupid. Uh, and they're still there. They just they just go interdimensional, which is a fairly common thing on this world. The whole idea of of uh, of going interdimensional, and and we can talk about that more at another time. And so, with these megalithic tours, you know, we go into to we'll say we'll go to a a circle of stones, and there's one that Amelia and I have in mind that is just patently and, and uh, walk up, you could touch the stones, you can feel the energy radiating out of the stone. The energy of the of in that area, and the you know, it's a very, very, very strong uh, vibration, and it bec- and it does really tie in a lot with the with the earth energy and the earth energy becoming the shakti energy, and the shakti energy becoming the kundalini energy. So when we take these tours, it, it is kind of like a, a traveling seminar in a, in a very real way. And so I would like to uh, once again invite anybody who would like to be to to be a part of this type of a tour. Uh, I have done this a few times now, and Amelia is correct when I when I arrive at a place, I immediately get downloaded a lot of information about that place, and. Uh, you know, it just it, it is what it is. You'll have to feel the place yourself to be able to resonate with what I'm saying about it. But uh, there's some pretty wild uh, experiences for people to have uh, everywhere. You know, in, in in southern Ireland to the the Crazy Man's Well, which is a a water where they would they would send crazy people to drink at that well because it would help them. And then of course the uh, the 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 scientists come in and take a water sample, and oh yeah, here they they find components in the water that even modern day medicine has just you know started to use in uh, uh, medicines for for mental imbalance, and this this happened naturally, sort of, because in in, in Ireland, springs just burst out of the ground and form lakes and form rivers that and this flow into the ocean. Uh, this was a fairly common event in ancient Ireland, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's still occurring every now and again. Have you heard of a, heard of it occurring like that, Amelia? Uh, um, not so dramatically now, Chris, and no, but there are a lot of stories about it occurring in times gone by. Um, but no, I can't recall anything in, in modern times. Well, there's a there's a, a something called the Annals of the Four Masters for anybody who's interested in ancient, extremely ancient Irish. History. Once again, these are oral histories, and 
as you, as you read through the the uh, the annals of the four masters, you begin to get an idea of ancient Ireland that most people have no clue about. Uh, Ireland is exceptionally rich in sacred sites, everything from uh, medieval Christian to to the type of tour that we're doing with the ancient ancient sites, sites that are you know eight or more thousand years old. And uh, and so this is something that uh, will really begin to stir the Kundalini for some reason. That I mean, I think they were using actually the, they were using the Kundalini to build these monuments. And so when you go there, your Kundalini recognizes the signature of itself on those rocks. And as I've said before, the Kundalini knows itself. And so as you come to a place like say Newgrange or the Hill of Tara or or the, uh, the, 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 the witch mountain, or any of those places, you will feel within your kundalini the, the information of the place, the history of the place. What, I mean, you'll get that download. I am not so unique, you know, with regards to the kundalini. I mean, I, well, I guess, I mean, I am just me with it. I mean, but we are all unique with the kundalini, and we all are able to reach into it by our surrender to it and receive the gifts of information that comes to us through that surrender which is something that i really am going to also discuss today is is surrender and i know i've discussed it before but it bears repetition simply because it is not the easiest thing to do but as you go into these to these uh to these temples these blessed areas uh your kundalini will respond and it, the kundalini in the place will also respond to you. Uh, and uh, as, as, as happened the last two times, we've gone into, uh, into the New Grange Monument. So I wanted to put that out there. So if anybody is interested in ancient uh, 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 kundalini tours in Ireland, uh, Give uh, give Amelia uh, an email at uh, kundalini matters at gmail dot com. Now let's talk a little bit about surrender. As some of you know, uh, I am I am blessed with the presence of Rosemary Goliath, who is an ex an ex marionette nun or marionite nun marionite. What is it? Neither. Sorry, American with the American community. What is it called? It's just a sister's community in the a, Roman Church. A sister's community in the Roman Catholic Church. And, uh, you know, she, she comes out here to California, and, and, you know, I've been working with her over Skype for a while now. And I'm going to let her, in her own words, talk with you about what her challenges have been in in surrendering to the Kundalini. So, so here comes Rosemary. Thank you, Kristen. The biggest surrender in what we were saying about uh, the surrender is the is the part, and I've worked really hard to create a life that is, it, by appearance, a good life and easily man. No, it wasn't easily managed always, but but within those standards, and then to come and realize how much that ego power is just not it. And it is very reluctant to give that up. And there have been ongoing times here, like up and down and like waves, and where I can feel the, the, the bottom of that wave being really where I can surrender to Chrisom as my teacher and am not second-guessing or not... Um, objecting to what he asks or finding something else I'd rather do. So I'm I'm pleased about those moments at least and that um that's carrying me through. And I want to say his patience, bless the man. Here I'm extremely grateful for his patience with that and encouragement. Well <laughs> I don't know how patient I am, but uh I appreciate those kind words, uh, Rosemary, and and yes, yes, I will be paying you those twenty dollars right after the show. Thank you. Uh, so, surrender doesn't come easy. As Rosemary mentioned, we spend our entire lives 
working through our egos in order to survive in this world, this predatory world. And along comes the Kundalini, and, and now you're being asked to surrender the control of your life to some uh, energy that has kind of taken you over from within and is telling you not to eat meat, and then the, two weeks later it's telling you to eat meat. It can, be, it can get really confusing. Uh, you know, surrender is, is really one of the first areas that a person needs to get into with this. Uh, if you are unable to surrender, then you're basically extending an invitation to Kundalini syndrome, which is what typically will drive people into a, uh, a psychiatric treatment facility. Uh, Rosemary has a unique background as a, as a Catholic nun for 25 years, and, and she learned, uh, I think, in, in a very real environment about what it is to surrender to god surrender to christ surrender to uh you know the the sister that's that's you know snoring in bed next to your room or you know how you how you are being tolerant and how you are following the rules you know they've got a lot of rules around silence and rules around you know cleaning up the convent i mean imagine you know 25 girls living together it's going to get a little messy so so you you know they have these very strict rules in place and and so for 25 years from 16 to 25 years later you know she is in this school and most of us uh coming into the kundalini will not have the benefit of of rosemary's type of experience now we can we can have the benefit of the military the military can also teach you how to be very very disciplined uh you know and certain other protocols uh, it doesn't have to be a Catholic religion. It can be a Muslim religion. It can be a, uh, a Hindi religion. It can be, you know, any of the religions will give you a a mystical aspect of themselves that will allow a person, for the most part, to develop strong levels of discipline. Even even the shamanic communities uh, have this within them, and so it doesn't. You know, we're certainly not saying just by virtue of Rosemary being a, a Catholic nun that, oh, you must be a Catholic nun in order to receive the Kundalini well. No, of course not. Uh, but you do need to have a level of discipline that, that you can either develop or or you can uh, follow uh, as you do the surrender because you will get messages from the Kundalini in your dream life but also in your waking life, uh, you, you know, commands to do such and such a thing forgive that person let pa- let that person in or or you know place place your hand on that button because so and so is going to touch it later and they could use that healing you know these types of com- uh, of command structures come through the kundalini to you once you've surrendered to it now you know i i work with people every day every single day i work with people and we if you know one of the main levels of conversation is to surrender now rosemary said surrender to her teacher well i can understand that you know you you take a look at me and you take a look at my pickup and you know you kind of go wow god this guy is just living on the edge of society here he's the last person i want to surrender to i, I might give him a couple of bucks and you know send him on over to the food kitchen <laughs> i don't know about surrendering to him um it's not so much surrendering to me. Yes, I will be giving people instructions and things of that nature, but it's about surrendering to the Kundalini. Surrendering to the Kundalini in the teacher, being the teacher and helping the teacher be a teacher of the Kundalini. But it's also a surrender to the Kundalini in you, in yourself. That's not the easiest thing. You know, we, we grow up, you know, never say die, never surrender, never give in, never give up. Except now with the Kundalini, I I am saying just the opposite. I am saying, give it up to the Kundalini. Give it up to the divine. Surrender yourself completely. Surrender the control of your life. Be willing to go that far. If you're going to make, you know, Kundalini is interested in you abandoning your children or abandoning your job uh, or abandoning your spouse. But, you know, if, if the spouse or the job gets in the way, those 
those can come onto the chopping block. But usually it's just a change, a change up for a better situation. But with children, no, you don't get to abandon your kids. So even though you surrender completely to the Kundalini, you must also to the understanding that you're not being asked to abandon your family. Especially if you have a supportive spouse. When you have a supportive spouse, you have a family unit that is working with the kundalini that is extremely important to the whole kundalini equation. I have seen it too many times. I can see kundalini traveling in families. Kundalini will follow family genetic lines. Okay? You know, uh, uh, have you seen Yeah. Uh-oh, I think Amelia must have gone to the bathroom. So uh, we'll save that question for her later on. For any of you who do have a question about this, though, please feel free to call 347-934-0026. And uh, uh, if Eileen or Fashji is there, if you could call in just to let me know I'm actually being heard. Sometimes, sometimes blog talk doesn't really give you any clue you know you think i'm sitting here in the studio and i have all these little buttons and things around me well i don't they they leave you somewhat blind here and so yeah if if if, if you could give a call in just to let me know that people are are there uh i'm not even sure amelia's hearing me at this point but i will i shall continue so one of the things i'm hearing you you prison ah thank you amelia did you hear my question to you uh, there's somebody online now. I just just put them through. It's probably Fasty or Eileen. It looks like Eileen. Okay, you're through now. Hi, uh, Fasty or Eileen. This is Eileen. Okay. I just hold on. Yeah, turn the computer off. No, you're coming through. You're coming through. You're on. Oh, thank you, thank you, sweet Eileen. Thank you very much. Okay, well you're welcome. Then. Thanks again, my dear. Okay. Uh, Bye. Um, bye bye, my dear. Bye bye. And uh, now we see. have we, uh, we have it? somebody else. Hello, caller. Fasti. Hey, Fasti, how are you? Fine, Master C. How are you? Oh no, there's not a lot of fineness in that fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we already talked about what I'm dealing with. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. Uh, but yes, I was just calling in to say that you were coming in. I uh, invariably had uh, problems with the browser there. One of the plugins uh, dropped off, and I think that was around the same time that uh, Amelia might have been away. Seems to be your energy that, that <laughs> creates these things. <laughs> it was Amelia's fault. <laughs> <laughs> you let's blame it on Amelia. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to get out of the way here because I'm enjoying this uh, this, this uh, subject of, um, you know, the, how the Kulunini can be supported within the family. And if you have, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I wanted to hear more about that. But I was searching, and I, I think my wife is somewhat supportive because she sometimes listens to the, the conversation. So if that's any indication, and I suspect that she is. So. <laughs> Well, my my my, I tip my hat to your wife. <laughs> yes, yes. Me too. It's, 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 it's so important to have a supportive spouse and a supportive family. I mean, the opposite is what typically occurs, unfortunately, and that is when one spouse feels like they're forced to commit their dear beloved husband or wife to a psychiatric detention center. <laughs> Not yet. <Yeah. laughs> Not yet. Be advised. Well, Be advised. I'm sure she's thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, I'll get out of the way here. Thank you so much. Thank you for and calling. Yes, you're coming through quite clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Well, let's, right. let's 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 take the 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 let's take the cue from from Fashi and we'll. We'll discuss more about this. 
I have seen uh, genetic traits of Kundalini activity flow from the parent to the child. Uh, not all kids get it, but I think a lot of them do. And uh, within within the parameters of what that child is able to have and to hold within the family environment that they find themselves in, uh, will determine how or if ever that that kundalini potential is going to be accessed by that by the person as they're a child or by later on as an adult, like when they turn either 21 or 30 or 27 around those ages. Uh, this can really, really, really be a factor. And those of you that have the kundalini and you have children, start looking at your kids. And if you see that your your kids, you know, don't program them to you know when you're asking questions don't program them to say hey are you seeing floating lights or you know or do you you know is there a boogeyman under your bed because invariably they will say yes they will want to please you so so do your best to to really uh to to be to be neutral about it when you ask the questions so that you can reach a level of truth uh from the child without having to to you know want to please you all the time now the other aspect is you know when you start you know when a person starts having kriyas in front of another spouse if that spouse doesn't know what a kriya is it's going to scare the heck out of them and they will call 911 thinking that you're having some sort of a seizure or a heart attack or whatever and so do your best those of you that are able to talk to your spouse about it and i know that's not all of you but for those of you who are able to talk with your spouse about the kundalini, educate them about kriyas. Educate them about entities. Do your best. Pick your words very carefully. You know, pick your words very, very carefully. Try not to scare anybody. Don't use this as a way to bolster your ego about how different and great you might feel. Uh, use it as an opportunity to educate your spouse so that as the symptoms grow grow stronger. Hi. Oh. Sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Hi, Kristen. Sorry, we have Jake well, who's here. Who's this, Chris? Is this Chris? Hi, Jake. How are you? Uh, good. You guys are coming in loud and clear. I have nothing to add except my wife uh, has been trying to commit me from for non Kundalini uh, issues for years. It's good to hear uh, you, Jake. No, and there's no <laughs> jail big enough to hold me, but I wanted to say hi to you guys, and it's great, and I'll see you soon. You're coming to stay, right? Yes, yes, yes. We'll oh, be coming great. visiting you. Oh, yeah. great. Oh, good, good, good. Keep up the gear. I'll, and I'll get you back to the show. It's great, great show. Thank you, Jake. Hi, Jake. We're looking, we're yeah, looking forward hi. to meeting you at the seminar in in, in New York. So yeah. see you it's in me now, Amelia. It's me, Eleanor. Hi, Elsie. Hello, Eleanor. Yeah, hi. I just want to say hello to you and that I'm looking forward to see you both here and enjoy our time together in your family. Uh, and, and what you were saying is not true because I am ready myself. <laughs> By the way, two <laughs> days ago tonight, I had a, a snake. I had a dream, uh, in my dream snake. That's what uh, he explained to me. This is Kundalini. <laughs> Well, okay, I know that you are doing now very important stuff. Good night. I'll say goodbye <laughs> and I'll listen. I, uh, all I can do is listen. Everybody has me whipped into shape. All I do is listen anymore. I'm in complete <laughs> surrender. The Epifrandos, Epifrandos by I surrender. So I'll, you guys take it from there. Love you. Talk to you soon. Love you, Jake. Bye. Love you, Jake. Jake and Ellen. Bye, bye, Jake. Uh, Oh, went, oh I'm so looking forward to meeting them in in New York again. <laughs> uh, Amelia, Amelia and I met for the first time in person at John of God's uh, in Brazil, and that was the first time that we met Jake and Jake and Ellie. And so uh, it, we are old friends, and so it was nice to hear his voice. and uh, And I would like uh, to say to Jake and Ellie. Uh, uh, congratulations with regard to you. Let's let's put our prayers out that they can find a, uh, a you know the best solution uh, for for that beautiful country. 
and that they have self-rule and self-government, that it makes it safe for, for all the citizens of, of Ukraine. Uh, and so as we continue our conversation about the surrender, uh, you're going to get some really odd lessons that the Kundalini will want you to learn. And and these can affect the, the level of communication you have with your spouse, with your children, with your boss, with your friends, with perfect strangers. And I, and I just want you, as I've said in other programs, I just want you to surrender into it. Even though it's strange, scary, make sure that the lines of communication between you and your spouse are wide open. If your spouse is is definitely not willing to hear this, not willing to listen, not willing to learn, not willing to go anywhere with this, um, that, you know, in the short term, that shouldn't be too big of a problem. In the long term, it will definitely blossom into an issue. Uh, and, and the you know, you have no choice with the Kundalini. You have no choice with that. Uh, once Kundalini comes, once it's up, it's up. It's up. And, and chemical treatments uh, will leave you in a state of mind that uh, will allow you to appreciate the life the way you've come to appreciate life. Uh, you know, it can get much fuzzier and much more out of focus. Uh, some of you may remember uh, Thorazine and seeing people do the Thorazine shuffle. Well, I worked in uh, in uh, I worked in hospitals, psychiatric uh, hospitals, in my earlier days, and uh, you know that's that's a real thing, you know, drool coming out the side of your mouth, and you know your eyes are kind of wide open and vacant, and this is what can happen to a person who has the kundalini and is put into a psych ward by their spouse through lack of information or fear. And this is why I'm trying to get this information across to you in as, in as simple and clear a way as, as you possibly can. You will need to surrender to the Kundalini for the benefit of, of your life. This is an enlightenment equation, and it's not an equation that is easily broken. Uh, and it is an equation that lasts for the life of the individual that is having this. And so it's not going away. You can try to step on it as much as you can. And I have to say, early in my process, I tried to step on it in every way I could. And I was, I was using legal substances and illegal substances. All I wanted was for it to stop and go away because it can feel like you're possessed. If you don't know what's going on, uh, you know, it, cause it is such a powerful force. You can literally feel like you, you wound up in some, you know, <laughs> grade A horror film and you know here you are the star and, and so really really embrace educating yourself and educating your spouse and I'm going to invite you to go to Kundalini Awakening Systems the number one dot com go to the fifth selection on the left and you'll see that it's marked the safeties print out those safeties put them somewhere put them on your coffee table Put them next to the bedside. Put them in the car. Put them in the bathroom. Wherever you do most of your reading. <laughs> okay? And share it with your spouse if they can have it. If the spouse can't have it, uh, share, the, share the information with yourself. Share it with yourself. Make sure that you know what's going on with you. And you, you and your kundalini will have a little private chit-chat with regards to what will be appropriate or inappropriate uh, types of phenomena to have occur with you in front of your spouse. Um, and then, then it turns into somewhat of a, a waiting game as the Kundalini begins to work on your spouse. And let's, let's talk to Amelia Centaur a little bit about this. Uh, Amelia, are you there? Are you there? Are you present and accounted for next to your computer? Yes, ah. this is I am. <laughs> I just, this minute, actually, Bruno has sent you a message. It says, here I am. Hello to everyone. Hello, Chris and Amelia. It's nice to hear you again. Oh, well, who is that? Bruno. Oh, Bruno, Bruno. Well, blessings and, and love to you, Bruno. 
And don't don't worry about your hair. Your hair looks fine. Your hair looks, <laughs> your hair looks good. <laughs> Just and the, the fact that you have it right there where I don't, you know, it makes it look really good. So uh, <laughs> have you noticed uh, any of your kundalini rubbing off on your spouse, Amelia? Oh, indeed, I have, Chris. I mean, the journey with me and John with regard to, kun- to kundalini has been a wonderful unfolding. Um, to begin with, I am... I wouldn't have shared much with him, but when I discovered um, your website and your teachings, that was really the beginning of our communication because he was able to also read um, information that explained some of my, in inverted commas, weirdness. <laughs> so that was, that was helpful, you know. That, that allowed him to see what was happening for me in a different way. It affirmed for him that, you know, I was kind of normal enough in a kundalini context. So that was a real helpful thing for us together as a couple. So that, that was wonderful. So thank you for that um, as well. So, yes, so as, to, as we began to go through, I mean, my kundalini is part of John's life as well. And I, you know, it communicates to John. You know, John has had experiences, I mean, real experiences of Kriyas. He has had experiences of things that Kundalini has communicated to me, which I have told John, and he has seen those things unfold. So he is very, very aware um, of Kundalini being a real life presence in our life as a family. And because I'm surrendered to Kundalini, I mean, totally surrendered in intention. I I, I fail often, but my intention is to be totally surrendered to Kundalini, and that is what the aim of my life is. And so that is, of course, completely integrated now into our family Um, and our everyday living and some of the very big decisions that we've taken. So, yeah, does that answer your question? How, how is it inter- integrated into your family? Oh, my gosh, in so many ways. Well, I mean, okay, where do I begin? Um, let me begin by even talking about my practice. Um, I have a practice that I do the five Tibetans, for example. My son is also doing the five Tibetans now. My husband how old, does how, the five how old, Tibetans. How, how old is your son that, who is doing the five Tibetans? He's 14. Ah, he's, he's 14. 14. And how yeah, did so, how, how did how did his interest become sparked? No, no pun intended. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's very difficult for me to pull up one particular thing, um, because I wouldn't have spoken about Kundalini. I'm searching my files, my memory files. Um, I wouldn't have spoken about Kundalini to anybody but my husband for a long time. And then I would have just begun to allow things to be seen, such as my practice, you know, such as even my communication with you, that you were my teacher, um, I'm doing my practice, things like that. And then there were a couple of actual incidences that Kundalini gave for Jonathan to witness, small things, but big things. For example, we were sitting in a waiting room one day in the hospital, he had injured his arm and he was, we were waiting to be x-rayed and he was really, really bored and suddenly I felt Kundalini and Jonathan said, oh for goodness sake, how long more are we going to be here? And I said, by the time we count to, I can't remember what the number was, let's say 29, um, they're going to come out and say Jonathan and he said, yeah, right. And we went 29, 28, and when we got to zero, the nurse walked out at that particular moment and said, Jonathan O'Connor. And I told him that I had been given from Kundalini to tell him that so that he would become aware. It was, it, I mean, it sounds so trivial, and it's not a parlor game, but it was a real communication to my son to pay attention to the fact that Kundalini was real and there was a couple of other things like that occurred 
there was another very big dramatic thing that occurred that I won't bother going into. That again was another indication to my son that Kundalini was real because he's cynical, you know, and he needed some concrete things um, to give him an indication that what was happening with mom was actually not airy fairy. There was a lot of, of stuff to it, you know. Have any of your so other have, children, have, have your other kids also had uh, any kind of phenomena come to them? Yes, they have. My older daughter has had um, a lot of phenomena, but at the moment it has become quiet again because that's the way it's being for her. But yes, she has. And my other daughter also has, but she's kind of in denial. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been very it's been very gentle with her, but I can see it. And I see other indications as well, um looking. But I mean, yeah. Yeah. So there yes, indeed. And my husband has had creas um real physical Kundalini creas as well. Um and experienced those. So it is it, it's connected to all of my children actually. Mm. Um in different, in different ways, you know. Well, thank you, and, and you know, and, and it's so true. I mean, this will follow, especially if if a, if the parent is practicing in front of the children, you know, doing the five Tibetans, doing the uh, the meditation and the pranayama that you do after the five Tibetans, doing the stillness meditation, even for some of the more advanced students, doing the tritakas and and the Sri Yantra practices. Uh, you know, the, the, the child will see that and feel that that is a way that is calling to them, uh, simply because the parent is doing it. You know, there doesn't have to be a Kundalini involvement for the child want to want to emulate the parent, but as the child does emulate the parent, uh, the Kundalini can, can jump pretty successfully, uh, from one, from the parent to the child. Uh, and you know, especially living in, in the same house and, uh, you know, sharing energy in such a an way as we do within the family unit. So, yeah, thank That's you. Right. Thank you for that. Go ahead. And also there would have been some healing experiences that my son would have, have um, had as well with the Kundalini. Well, go um, ahead and describe and that some of those. All... Just describe some of those. Okay, well, one of them would have been a burn that he got, a fairly severe burn from from the cooker. And immediately um, I went and put my hand by the burn and very silently said nothing. And he felt this tingling and he felt the energy go into his hand and all the pain vanished and he didn't get any blisters and there was nothing happened to his hand. And that was... Um, another example and recently he had pulled something in his back and um, again healing from the kundalini was given to him and he felt that in a very very tactile way and it had these things have um things have a great effect upon upon him you know um, and my other my husband has seen this as well and Kundalini chooses, Kundi, you know, that does, every time he just bangs his knee, he doesn't get a healing or anything. It's just Kundalini comes sometimes, and this is, is given very strongly to, to my son in particular, because my other children don't live at home. He's living with us all the time. And he also has dreams and things that, you know, he's beginning to talk about now more than he used to. So, and they, they've been interesting. And he, he had a few years ago as well some strange phenomena himself and some nightmares and things like that. And because of my own experience, I, I was very aware not to project anything onto him, but I was able to hold those nightmares, let's call them, or those good dreams and, and some of the more difficult ones in a different way for him, we say, than was done for me when I was younger. And that is, again, true through the Kundalini, really, and through what I have learned and through my own experience. So that's very beneficial for the next generation coming along. Oh, yeah. So and I'll be thank quiet you. now. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you for, okay. for talking about that. I know it's it's not something that you're you're, you're able to hear a lot. I mean, I only uh, on out of the 290 videos that I have out there, I only have two where there's a parent discussing what it's like to see their child go into the Kundalini awakening, and you know the the many different concerns that that a parent can have when they see their child, say, having a Kriya or, or having emotional Kriyas or things of that nature. So thank you, Amelia, for, for talking about this with us. Well, could I say one more thing on that, actually, Chris? Sure, For sure. me, it's going to be a little bit different because um, if I'm remembering correctly, let's say for that parent, they didn't themselves have an experience of the Kundalini, whereas I am in no way fearful for my son. And he is coming into it in, with knowledge and information and in the context of the safeties, which, you know, we are also talking about in our family. Um, and these are part of how we live our lives. So I have no fear for him. So he begins the Kriyas, he's, and assuming that he does, I mean, you know, if that's what occurs for him, well, then there's no fear for me. It's something that I would wish for everybody. (laughs) Yeah. I would wish that for everybody in the context of information and the safeties and all of that. So so there is no fear, you know, and that's a wonderful thing as well. For him, I feel, as the next gen, as you were talking about the genetic or the DNA or that connection from one generation to the next, that's that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? It is absolutely gorgeous. Yes. Uh, yes. And it, and it yes. especially with information. Oh, I'm hearing yeah. an echo here. Is that you, Amelia? Am I hearing your echo? Are you hearing it? Yes. It's okay. Okay. It's right. I, go, I go blue. I go blue, so I'll be quiet. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's just blog talk here. I mean, you know, we, we don't have the the full-on big fancy radio studio, you know, 38 channel, you know, soundboard and all that. We have an iPad. <laughs> and I have my kitchen. <laughs> I'm at my kitchen table and you're in your ashram on your chair perhaps? Yes, I'm in my chair. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not it's not a fancy I do it probably sounds, you know, ring in the studio. It's not an elaborate thing at all. It's, but isn't technology wonderful that we can do yeah. this? That you are in California, I'm in Ireland, and the listeners here, let me see, that I can see, you know, Julie the is there, she's in Caroline. There's people everywhere, people. Tim is from the UK. There's people everywhere, and we can gather and share, you know, this this space, the satsang with you. It's, it's wonderful. I, I, so, Hi, Tim and Julie, Bruno, Fasci, Eileen, and anybody else that I I can't see that you're there. But hello, everyone listening live. Uh, Thank you for joining us. It's very, very nice to have you with us. Uh, So I'm going to shift it a little bit now. I just got a big thing, big download, so to speak. This is a little touchy. It's not one that I talk about too much. Whether it can be manipulated by the Kundalini. And I mean snowstorms, rainstorms, sunshine, weather. It's it's just happens. It happens for me. It happens for me. And so, you know, I come to you know I come to to Ireland a few times now, and it's rainy and rainy and rainy. But when I come there, the sun comes out, and it really kind of disturbs me because I like the rain. But the sun comes out, or just last month, you know, uh, before we got any of these rains, I knew, I knew that the rain was going to come. I just knew it. I felt it. it and I, it was almost like the Kundalini will call it just to prove a point to the person that's having the Kundalini. And the point is, you know, there's very little that the Kundalini cannot do. It can do almost anything that it wants to do through the individual. The more you surrender to the Kundalini, the more you're willing to accept its its agenda with you, with your enlightenment equation, the greater the the sacred skill will come to you. Uh weather control is just one aspect of it. And it it is not 
the individual corporeal person that is doing the weather control. It is the kundalini through the individual corporeal person that is initiating the the, uh, the weather response. You know, and these days I walk outside, I walk in the rain, and I just feel, I feel the the intelligence behind it. I feel the levels of radiance that that can call it. Uh, and I want you to know that the more people that become activated with the kundalini, and I mean in a real sense, not a not pretend you know you know purchase a kundalini mastership for 30 bucks you know by going to some weekend outfit no 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 i mean the real deal where you're you're going through the kriyas you're going through the process you're you're having to make an emotional uh evolution within your body by yourself really most of the most of us actually all of us are going to walk the kundalini path alone Yes, we can have friends that are that are walking it as well. We can have a spouse that's walking it, but nobody has our karma. Our spouse does not share our karma. It shares some, but not all of it. Okay, so we all walk the kundalini alone, and the kundalini walks us alone. Okay, uh, but you can share, and you can have community, and you can discuss and. Sometimes we have shared phenomena, and so it's very beneficial to discuss these types of things. But with weather modification or manipulation, it is a real thing. And and I was told this, God, I can't tell you how many decades ago. Uh, yeah, yeah, this is a real deal. The more people have kundalini in this world, in 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 in, in this society, the Western society of the of uh, Europe and China and India and South America, uh, you know, Canada, North America, Australia, Indonesia, Asia, the better this planet is going to be, the cleaner this planet is going to be, the healthier this planet and all life forms on this planet are going to be. So now I now I shifted into weather modification simply because I see that our governments and our militaries are doing it by using different uh cloud seeding uh devices such as uh you know I I I won't go into the chemicals but they're using they're using different chemicals that will try to either bring rain to an area or bring a drought to an area, you know, basically trying to weaponize the weather. And uh, so we may see more of this as time goes by. But with the Kundalini, uh, because the emphasis is on life and the diversity of life, uh, I would re- I would highly recommend those who are being called into the kundalini to to take that call accept that call change yourself and change this world there are many you know you know there are things that are that can be done beyond uh, weather manipulation i mean i mentioned earlier going into dimension as the dimensional folds are fairly easy to do you know the dimensional folds like the two aha de danan took uh, you know, that's not out of reach for Kundalini people. Neither is astral travel. Uh, th- this whole Akashic record thing, you know, this is kind of... <sighs> you get this from a lot of channelers. Oh, oh, Amelia, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, Amelia, my God, you did that? You know, it's like anybody is going to give access to... This is private, personal Akashic records to some channeler that's charging twenty bucks a head. You know this is silly. So I would I would highly recommend that that people begin to discern through some of the New Age fantasies that are out there. And one of those fantasies is the Akashic records. Another fantasy are these these lords of divine rays, um, Saint Germain and whatnot. I won't get into that. I won't get into that. But you know, there's there's plenty of fantasies to go around and and uh do your best. I mean, you know, and here I am talking about weather my you know, manipulation. I mean, you know you know, those new agers can turn right around, 
to me and go, oh, yeah, Mr. Noah Kashuk Records, but, oh, weather modification is just fine. <laughs> All I can tell you is, 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 is what, I'm, what I'm being given to give to you. And, yes, yes, there are certain levels of contradiction that are there. Uh, suffice to say that, yes, as you surrender to the Kundalini and as you surrender deeply to the Kundalini, your life begins to change in very mysterious ways that that are that do not follow uh physics that do not follow the acceptance of science. you know scientific methods and scientific results do not always uh uh matter to the kundalini at all it only matters to the people who follow that system okay so just 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 an fyi about uh the akashic records and and some of the extreme phenomena of, of the Kundalini. Uh, uh, oh, I better give the number out if you'd like to ask a question about any of these subjects or your own personal Kundalini awakening experience. Please call uh, United States Area Code 347 934 If you're calling from outside the United States, you would just put a, a 01 in front of that and then 347 9 Three four zero zero two six. Uh, I believe that's how it's done. Uh, Julie so, yeah. has made a comment. Christian. Julie, Julie said, and there was one year that her and her, hus- her husband purchased a ring stick for Julie for her birthday, and a few of her friends and herself took note of the many times that she shook the stick, and it would end up raining later that day or the next day. Oh, I see. Hello. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we have somebody screaming outside the door here. She's walking barefoot in the rain here. She doesn't look too happy. Just want to make sure she's okay here. Just a second. Okay. Uno momento, por favor. Just a second. One moment. Okay. I think Prism has actually left the building. <laughs> I'll give you the, um, the the address again then if anybody has any interest in attending the seminars. There's still a place left in New York um, if anybody is interested in that. And there are a few places in Ireland. And again, if you're interested in that Kundalini tour that's going to be happening after the seminar, you can contact me about that as well. It's Kundalini Matters at gmail.com. Kundalini Matters at gmail dot com. So yeah, so she's having a bit of a problem, but uh, it's not our problem. She's she's just upset at a boyfriend, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, uh, could you could you go blue? Could you go blue, uh, uh, Amelia? Yes. Thank you, thank you. I get that echo. On here, okay, so yeah, um, if you have a question or or a comment that you'd like to make, uh please call three four seven nine three four zero zero two six and we're gonna go ahead and move onward here. There's two movies that I'd like you to be aware of they're old older movies they're not like nineteen sixties or seventies, but one is called What Dreams May Come. And this one has Robin Williams in it. And the reason why I'm going to suggest that you watch this movie is from an astral traveling perception, they're quite accurate about what you can see uh, with regards to uh, experiences that can come to a person that has recently uh, become deceased. Uh, I have traveled. uh, I have traveled astral projected into areas of of where dead people go and i've met dead friends uh you know in the in the astral and they're all doing just fine so i I, you know the only people that don't really get to see the dead are those who aren't dead everybody else is dead (laughs) of course now dead death is not the end thing it's just a birth into everything it's just we are behind the 
for very good reasons. Uh, you know, we don't get to step into that realm too much until we become able to to handle the level of information that is given uh, such more than your physical body. You are more than your physical body. Okay. And the kundalini is also an aspect of that moreness of your physical body. Uh, so, yeah, as you watch what dreams may come, uh, you'll see uh, – It's I'm not going to give any away, but they had some fairly accurate uh, scenarios, at least that I was able to corroborate uh, before I saw the movie. I'd experienced, you know, some of the things that they're showing – movie was ever even thought of okay so that's one that i would uh, uh strongly recommend that that kundalini people or people on a, in, in a spiritual equation living in a spiritual equation in their life would be interested in another one is called the last mimsy and that is spelled m-i-m-z-e-y the last mimsy and and this this has some very, very interesting concepts with regards to the Sri Yantra. And uh, uh, a lot of Sri Yantras were used for that movie. Our, our, our dear friend Ed gave uh, the ashram one of the paintings of a Sri Yantra, the artist who did all the Sri Yantras for the last Mimsy painted and and so we have that hanging up in the white room right now and uh rosemary's been using it for uh trataka so ed very much and i would recommend that you watch the last mimsy and it you know it'll look like a kid's program it and it is it is it's it, it's clean enough to be a kid's program uh but the concepts that are discussed are fairly advanced with regards to uh metaphysics and so i recommend the last mimsy uh for kundalini to watch if you have any uh questions about those movies feel free to call in at three nine three four zero zero six i'm going to come over here to rose and get her take on the last mimsy it's a it's a wonderful little story. As Kristen was saying, the family could watch it. There is a, a, a child who is one of the major uh, figures in which you can see what's going on when she doesn't have that natural uh, objection that our adult mind uh, projects and, and things. Very touching, all of it, and uh, I'd recommend it as well. Yeah. Yeah, um, it's something you can watch again and again and get some, you know, different uh, qualities from it. Um, so with regards to those two movies, you know, this is not about scaring people silly. You know, Hollywood so much is is all about, you know, let's just make things as horrible and gory as we can possibly make it. You have things like Saw or all these, you know, evil in Affected movies and just like, geez, Louise, you know, get a, get over it. You know, it's not all about evil. It is, it is. There's, there's so much more love to go around in this world. It's just that the people that are practicing love just aren't so noisy about it as those who aren't practicing love. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, so with regards to that, it's, it's very, very good to see at least two movies uh, uh, that in order to to give yourself kind of a an, an entertainment oriented uh, education now they don't go into the safeties and they don't even mention Kundalini in either one but that's okay that's okay these are good primer movies to give to say a spouse or a, a family member a parent who doesn't understand uh altered states of existence or different states of expression. And so as they watch these movies, they can, be, you know, gently become uh, um, informed about these areas. And so, yeah, I would definitely uh, 
uh, suggest that you watch those two movies. And there are there are other movies out there that I haven't seen, but th- th- that would probably be very good for Kundalini. Certainly the uh, the movie called Kundalini by Nitin Adsul, A D S U L, and uh, you can purchase that movie at Amazon. Uh, and uh, that movie is also another a very very good primer, uh, specifically about Kundalini. And uh, and that would be very good to educate a spouse with as well. You get, you get, uh, you know, he interviews people, some people that don't have it, some people that do have it. Uh, you know, he he gets into to you know various interviews with regards to the Kundalini. And I wrote, I wrote a good portion of that movie myself. So you can get it on Amazon. I think it's around twenty dollars. Uh, and I recommend that movie as well. Uh, with regards to recommending things, I'll recommend uh, most of Gopi Krishna's work. I'll recommend uh, Autobiography of a Yogi by Yogananda. I'll recommend uh, any of the selected works of, uh, of uh, Vivekananda, Ramakrishna, and uh, Ramani, oh, he's got Maharshi. Especially Ramani Maharshi. Ramani Maharshi is very good. He's he's the one that really, really uh, understood that all awakenings start at the heart, and they bounce down first. Uh, but the heart, the heart has that sacred space within it, and and so once once the heart is going, well, then the the lower chakras will begin to to uh, to form, uh, and and. Part of the heart chakra is that level of discipline, that level of practice, that level of prioritization that makes Kundalini matter to you. I mean, you know, you can have such an amazing drive to get this, and you just wonder, you know, it's like, where is this drive coming from? Well, it's coming from the heart. It's coming from the heart, and if you manage to listen to all these different conversations that have been put out there. You know, your heart must be really in this, too. <laughs> Either that or, you know, you've got insomnia. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm open to questions right now. I have 42 minutes and 50 seconds left. And if anybody has a question and they would like to to call in, the number is 347 uh, as, as Amelia did mention, we're having those two seminars. You can, you can rewind at the beginning to hear that. But you can also go to the YouTube network and you can punch in chrism.kundalini in the search engine and that will bring up the 290 videos or something like that. Uh, that is going on over there. You can also reach this at kundaliniawakeningsystems1.com. Uh, uh, Amelia, can you give some of the other blog information? Because I'm not sure I have that address memorized. Um, I can, of course, Prism. That's the um, Ascension blog spot. So, at www.kundalini.com. And on the right-hand side of the of that page, you will see a donate button. And if you wish to make a donation to Kundalini Awakening Systems and to support the work that does, it would be very welcome indeed. That is www.ascension-kundalini.blogspot.com. And um, Chris, and what about Interior Castle? Is that supported by St. Teresa? Would you recommend as a book to read? Yeah, yeah. Interior Castles by Teresa of Avila would be an excellent book to read. Uh, so would any of the selected writings of St. Hildegard, St. John of the yeah. Cross, St. Francis of Assisi, St. Giles. Uh, uh, all of these people had Kundalini Awakening. St. Philip of Neri had Kundalini Awakening. The guy could lift beds at a distance. Now, you know, lifting a bed is useful i I think that would be a useful thing but saint philip of neri had that Mm -hmm. padre pio uh, any of these writings of padre pio as well 
And so, yeah, yeah, there, there are plenty, plenty of books to go around. I like Genevieve Paulson as well. Her first book, okay. Kundalini and the Chakras. Now that is channeled information, but I think it was Kundalini channeled information and, and, uh, it certainly uh, was was called on on by my Kundalini for me to read that. Uh, uh, an author by the name of T. Lobsang Rampa, so that's capital T period, uh, T for Tuesday. So, and that was actually his first name, Tuesday Lobsang Rampa. In in Tibet, they'll the first part of your name will be on the day that you were born. At that time, at least it was. I don't know if that still is is being used. But T. Lobsang, L-O-B-S-A-N-G, Rampa, A-R-A-M-P-A. So that's Rampa, R-A-M-P-A. And you can read a book of his called You Forever. And that that gives you some very interesting uh, techniques and understandings about uh, what you as a human being are capable of. Another uh, series of books that I would recommend are, of course, the Huna books. Uh, and and mm-hmm. Huna, the, the Huna books, uh, they're, they're amazing. They're, they're, they're right out of the Egyptian mystery schools as well, just as some of the early... Uh, forms of 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 uh of the Roman worship and the the Greek worship and the early Christian worship as well. Uh so Is that Max Freedom Long Max Christian? yes Max Max Freedom Long. Free- Max Freedom F R E E D O M Long L O N G. Max Freedom Long uh wrote most of these books uh in in the early part of the last century extending all the way up to the 1960s, uh, in 69, he wrote a book called What Jesus Taught in Secret. So for any of you who are interested in in some of the the, the hidden truths that, that uh, Christ was teaching, well, you go ahead and read Max Freedom Long's book. Uh, and these books are dealing with Kundalini. They call it something different. They call it Amakua. And uh, we we get the A U M not O M M but the A U M and you know you can trace that right back to Almakua which of course trace back to the to the Egyptian mystery schools and from the Egyptian mystery schools we can trace that back to the the mystery schools of the Atlantean uh, continent as well so yeah, the Max any of the Max Freedom Long books will help will help a Kundalini person. And some of the other books I've read, if you read Hafiz H A F I Z, Hafiz is Sufi. The Sufis are very knowledgeable about the Kundalini. Matter of fact, spinning to the right is one of the Sufi rites as well. And uh, you know it's. Alone in the in the Sufi understandings, what that spinning to the right will do for a person. Uh, not all, actually, most of the Sufis do not know about Kundalini. Uh, they call it the uh, uh, the Lataif, and so you have five Lataif, and the Lataif uh, begin to channel the energy of the divine uh, through the spine. So the the some some sects of the Sufis do understand this. Most of them don't. Uh, most of them will treat you like you're poisoned if you start to. So you want to be kind of careful about you know how you say what you say when you when you're when you're uh, talking to these different uh, belief systems. Yeah. Yes, Amelia. Hi. No, I wanted to ask a question, actually, but when you're finished speaking about books and things. Oh, yeah. It was really about the seminars. I'm just wondering, if if I was a listener and, you know, I had a Kundalini, you know, Kundalini was awakening or has awakened, and I was thinking, well, you know, I have this truth within me now, so I don't really, do I really need a seminar? What benefit would it be to me? I'm just wondering, would you speak about that? 
Well, the benefit would be uh, having a a. If you, uh, if you go ahead. This is for an, an awaken a person who has Kundalini awakening. Now I'm speaking. I, of. Do, I understand. I understand. So Thank this you. is a person. Person's coming to a seminar. They 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 have pre awakened Kundalini. I got it. The very first seminar I put on, which was in Marin County, all the people that came had awakened Kundalini. And they were in various levels of Kriyas, they were in various levels of psychosis. Uh, when, you, when you have Kundalini and you don't know what's occurring or, or you're not quite clear on the, on the concept, coming to an awakening seminar, well, first you do your research on the person that's giving the seminar. Uh, you find out, uh, you know, if, if they have any writings, and you know, you're you're looking at the writings. And so, if they have made it as far as the seminar, then already there has been a foundation for agreement to be had, a foundation for levels of understanding to be had. And so, within that context, the person is coming to the seminar with intact, and they're know how typically they're wanting to know how to make that process uh, be easier and more powerful you know because most of the people that have the kundalini uh, come to them uh, by themselves will not have really too much to do with ego control yet and uh, you know they'll go to the to the seminar really to get pointers on on how to live a life with the kundalini. And yes, if they want more power, then, then if their kundalini allows it, I will give them Shaktipat and boost, boost the amplitude that they have, but their kundalini has to allow it. Uh, you know, with, and, and that's something that, that typically the person won't be in a, in a level of being able to hear clearly the kundalini speak to them and even if they do even if they do uh they the the people that are coming to these seminars they're not just coming to hear some some old teacher up there spout off about the kundalini they're there to meet other kundalini people they're there for community as well as learning they're there for people who are working with the kundalini in a positive way in a love-based way in a courageous and brave way not in a fear-based oh you better be afraid of this or oh you got to protect yourself from that not going that way with it and sure sure there there are there are things that a person can do that will allow them to protect themselves say from getting a you know the the person that has the kundalini and they come to this seminar, they are getting a very strong leverage point from that can take their kundalini expand it through levels of surrender, expand it through levels of practice, expand it through levels of of the instruction that is given there at the seminar, expand it through uh, the understanding that yes, there are other people there is. There is communication. You know, there are there are many different of references that people can come with to a Kundalini awakening seminar. Uh, sometimes they want to be healed. They got an question, and they, you know, they they've heard about the curative powers of the Kundalini, and so the kind of the healing, and and if their karma allows it, I will give that healing. Amelia, well, I think. We'll give that kind of healing. Rosemary would give that kind of healing, as would Eileen. Um, there, there are many, many, many reasons why people come to these seminars, but for the most part, it's it's getting information and it's making contacts with other people who are, who are active or walking in that direction. There Thank you, have you. It. <laughs> Thank you very much. And the other thing was, when you were there just a few minutes ago and um, you were speaking about the Huna and you, you used the word Aum and you Aumed for a minute, I was wondering, would you do some Aumming, maybe just three or six Aums that we could sit and listen to? All right, all right. I'll do, six, I'll do six of them. Um, but I don't know how they come over... The problem with, with, with doing the alming, uh, 
on on blog talk is you just don't know whether it's being received the way you're giving it. Uh, and I, and I've already had technology kind of go a little haywire with the alming, but we'll see what happens. Now, Amelia, if I drop off, you have to take over, okay? <laughs> yes, well, it sounded really good here on my side when you did it. And um, if people just sit and if you're just going to do six of them, even if it doesn't come across as a little time, I think it will. All right, here we go. You'll need to go blue because I'll hear that echo. Go blue, go blue. All right, there we are. Well, uh, for those of you that uh, are cringing uh, because uh, Amelia has asked me to do this, and just plug your ears. It, it won't last long. <laughs> okay, Rosemary, you ready? All right, here we go. Ah. <clears throat> uh... some folks, the lower you go with the voice, you know, like the Tibetans, you know, the Tibetans will say, oh, the lower you go with the voice, the better the, the alm is. Um, I have found that you can, you, can, you can even do this kind of an alm. Here, let me try this. the kundalini will begin to modulate through it. You'll get super high harmonics with it. Mm -hmm. On recorded machinery, the microphone will pick up the super high octaves. Huh? Ah, yeah, Rosemary, well, go ahead. Say what you said. I was noticing that was happening with Kristen, but it startled me. I didn't know about that. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's they're like polyphonics. Mm -hmm. 
and uh and uh it's on the c d too and and if you do want a CD, you can uh, you can contact uh, Eileen at eloro55 at yahoo.com. Uh, and also, I believe she's at uh, www.kundaliniliving at gmail.com as well. So if you want a, a, a Kundalini movie or a, a Christmas CD, and I'm going to try to work with Rosemary to make another one, uh, then contact Eileen Loro, and she'll be more than happy to to uh, get on the phone and and have me send more to her. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Amelia, was that okay? Thank you very very much. That was that was really good. It, it was lovely. I could hear those vibrations, and and it was wonderful. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, man. <laughs> and uh, for, for yeah, those everybody you, has left the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> everybody left. Uh. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know how it sounded in the chat room, um, but um, no, people are still there. I'm joking. It, it sounded really good in my earphones, anyway, and it was wonderful. It was. So thank you for doing that. I, I was I was curious to know how it would be. Thank you. It's harder to hold a straight tone the lower the octave you go. The higher, for, for me at least, for, for the, the higher tone that I use, you know, the last one was, um, I can hold that tone straighter than if I'm going, That would be the typical amount yeah. of time you want to hold that out too. But there is that other sound, whether yeah. you're higher or lower, that is constantly present when you own. And it's Bruno perfect. says, um, very nice. And <laughs> Tim says, thanks. Um, have to work on my sustain. <laughs> tell, yeah, tell, Bruno, I mean, been... tell, tell Bruno it'll curl his hair. <laughs> yeah, he could do with that. <laughs> no, is there? Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you all yeah. for listening. So. Thank you, thank you for listening to the Ohms. Um, and if you if if you want to to download that or record that, feel free. I'm giving you permission right now. Okay. Um, feel free to download that and and to just put it on a like a a loop. And if you want to hear those Ohms, you can use that. Uh, in your practice or just to help you in your in your daily life the oming powerful the oming uh is is very much connected to your sixth chakra or your third eye and you want to make sure when you're doing the a u m the um uh oh i see I, oh god that does affect my my iPad is starting to wig out a little bit here. So that's the last one I'm going to do. Oh, no. Oh. No, it hasn't us. Oh, jeez. Let's just... Yeah, okay. So I won't be doing that. So, so... Uh, um, oh, the, the arming. Uh The AUM part is very good and, and very... But for the third eye activation, if this is what you're going for, extend the the AUM and the M mm part equally, and make them as long as you can. So, so if you're doing A A A A U U U U M M M, I don't want to do it because I don't want to screw this thing up. Um, make sure that you hum that last part, that M mm part, and really. Try to bring your eyes up while you do it. You know, if you if, if any of you are familiar with the safeties, you know that one of the safeties is an ocular mudra. An ocular mudra means a position of the eyes. And bring the eyes. So you just like try to look at your eyebrows when you're doing this. So when you're doing the mm part, have your eyes up. Actually, have your eyes up during the whole thing. Have your eyes up during the whole thing, and this will greatly, greatly uh, begin to work on your third eye, 
which uh, uh, if you contact me or, or we are able to have a, uh, a private conversation, I'll give you some other techniques that will help bring it up if you're interested. Uh, we have 20 minutes. And so I want to invite you to call in if you have a question or a comment about your Kundalini Awakening experience. You can call 347-934-0026. So if you have a question, you know, give us a call. Uh, With regards to the, the alming is really a great way to deflate a highly toxic emotional situation. If you can just kind of stop yourself in the middle of, of whatever, maybe it's an argument, maybe it's, uh, you know, passion is getting into to expressing your anger, just go into the alm. Get into the alm. Don't do it to your iPad, though. <laughs> My iPad still is doing kind of strange things with its ability to pick things up. Uh so, yeah, and be advised that the Kundalini will have an effect on your technology. It will have an effect on your technology. I'm on my fifth or sixth laptop, if if, if that gives you any kind of a clue. Because I don't like Windows and I'm trying to find a Windows 7 to put on the laptop. Uh, I haven't been able to use it for my Kundalini work yet. But once I do, you know, I, it may occur again. It has before. Uh, the, the, the Kundalini will begin to infiltrate into the systems, and it can turn on automatic functions. It can, I mean, you don't even have to touch the computer, and it'll start putting up pages. It'll start making, I mean, oh, it's amazing. You, you, you just look at it, and you go, where is it going? So, <laughs> um, I... I've had uh, motherboards warp uh, from from uh, from you know use, but also the Kundalini. So just so you know, just kind of an FYI with that. Um, and it doesn't look like we're going to get any phone calls, so I would like to say thank you to John and Amelia and family in the Kingdom of Kerry in Ireland. I would like to say thank you to Fasci and Eileen. Uh, for calling in, uh, and for Bruno and, and everybody who said hello. Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's it's great to meet with you here once a week on these Wednesdays. It's, and, and, and I know that, like, Bruno and people in the U.K., you know, it's very late over there, and I appreciate you staying up and listening uh, to this broadcast. And feel free that if you have any questions about your personal process, how to to actuate it more, how to bring things into maybe more of a balance for you, whatever it may be, uh, feel free to write down that question on a piece of paper and then save it for this next Wednesday's broadcast. And from there, uh, you know, just just give it to Amelia or myself, and uh, and uh, it will be answered. It we will give it, you know, our full attention. So please feel free to do that. And I want to welcome everybody who's listening in the archives, uh, our time travelers. This is this is Wednesday in uh, in late February, late February, and uh, you know. So whenever you're listening to this, you know, welcome to this information, and may this information uh, grace you and bless you as you go forward into your Kundalini awakening experience. Thank you for listening.